Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, Brian here again, and today I had um, an idea to do another episode on gray areas in China. So we did one before, and I like doing these episodes because they really give you a good insight into kind of the way China works, you know, down below, and a little bit of the culture here, whether it be the daily life culture or the business culture, which this really influences a lot. <clears throat> And I wanted to pick out a story about us and us renting our warehouse to kind of show you how these gray areas work. And so first I want to tell you like, what is a gray area? What does that even mean? And so in China, <clears throat> it's kind of like what is legal and not legal. You know, people find a way somewhere in the middle of that to make things work. Something that is allowed or not allowed. Uh, you know, they find somewhere, again, in the middle that works so that no one's hurt or harmed, but like they can avoid doing it exactly how it's supposed to do or not doing it at all. And uh, this happens all the time in daily life as well as business here. And um, I think, uh, you know, this might happen in other places, but in China it's especially pronounced. Uh, one of the reasons is a lot of times the rules are very absolute and also vague at the same time. So they demand something that might be very extreme, but the details of it might be very vague. And so people find a way to kind of wiggle out of doing something or doing it that way. And the other reason is probably just because of the one-party system here compared to many other countries around the world where there's multi-party systems. And so, you know, there's... Since there's one voice here and multiple voices in other places, the way in which rules are applied and um, followed uh, can be definitely very different. So I want to bring you to the example of us. Um, it was about a year ago or a year and a half ago, and we had outgrown our current warehouse, and I was looking for a new one. And I wanted to get one that was a bit nicer than our previous one but also was a bit more convenient so our employees can get to work easier and we can attract you know, better employees as well. And so I found a perfect warehouse and when I came in with the real estate agent, I realized that there were some uh, safety problems in terms of the building code that were not correct. But I figured you know, the previous tenant had been here for five years and that if that's the case, that they, they probably had no problem with these issues. And so I went ahead with signing, you know, signing the agreement. And a day after um, I signed the agreement, the landlord sent me a message. And he said, look, the hallway in your warehouse is not up to code. Actually, there's supposed to be a hallway from one end to the other so that both stairwells can be accessed in the case of a fire. And I had no idea that this was a rule. Um, and although it was, uh, there was a hallway, it wasn't closed off with a wall. And so I'm going to take you guys out there just to show you a few of the safety problems we had and explain them. And then I'll tell you at the end how we basically resolved it. Okay, so this is the hallway entering into our warehouse. And there's a few problems that we had, basically. So I want to show you this. So this wall is a solid wall. It's a, I'm knocking on it. Oh, you can't see my hand. Oh, it's cement basically. And then this wall right here, if I go over here to the other side, is actually plaster. And so that was the first problem in warehouses in China. You actually have to have hard, solid concrete walls in case there's a fire when you're storing product. And then the second problem is, if you see here, this is the hallway right in the middle, but there's no wall that seals off that hallway. And so the Landlord basically said, hey, look, you know, if the, if the safety guys come in, you might need to build a wall here, which is actually costs a lot of money. And, and if you can see here on the side, this is also not, this is also a plaster wall. So when we came in, we thought, wow, this, this place is great. Uh, everything's set up, but actually in reality, it wasn't. And I want to take you back here. There's two rooms. And the previous landlord, the previous tenant, had basically built a solid wall, concrete wall here, to pass safety. But above, 
this wall is plaster. And so the safety guys, the first time they came, they pointed out all these problems to us right away. Because of course they knew these problems from the previous tenant. So yeah, those are the problems that we inherited when we walked into this building. Okay, so now you've seen some of the problems that we walked into. And basically, you know, even, especially I'm from the US, so uh, even if you had like a triple net lease where you had to pay for everything inside, the structural integrity of the building from the landlord would usually be up to code. And then when you built it out, you would have to uh, make the, the building up to code. In this example, the structure of the building was not up to code to begin with. And so it's something that I didn't even think was possible. Um, so if you look at the first problem, which was the, uh, the plaster walls, um, basically those walls should be concrete. And the reason, as I said, was that, you know, if you're storing product in China, the safety code says that it needs to be cement. So if there's a fire, the walls don't burn down so quickly and people can escape. Um, and the second thing is that walkway, even though it's accessible from the tenants that are behind us and next to us, it's technically supposed to be its own hallway. So that whole wall on the side or that whole, you know, is something that we were supposed to, or the landlord expected us to build if there was a problem. Even though in our opinion, it's kind of the structural integrity of the building and that base should be there already, you know? And so this is kind of the problem that we encountered. And how did we deal with it? Well, when you first move into a building, it's very hard to build good relationships with the safety inspectors right away. And as we know in China, relationships are everything. And so funny enough, we have to go back to the landlord since they're the ones that have a relationship with the um, safety inspectors already, and we don't have time to build that up. And we have to work through them and actually give some of their employees hongbao, which is actually some money to help us out to tell the safety inspectors to kind of let us off easy. And so the problem that was kind of what we believe is a landlord problem, we have to actually pay him more for him to help us fix the problem. <laughs> And this is like a perfect gray area thing that we did, which is like, it's not totally to the rule, but going by the rule would cost us, our business, a large amount of money and we don't want to invest in the landlord's building. And so we find a different solution to uh, basically solve the problem uh, without having to build out all of that in the warehouse. And, um, you know, over time in China, you kind of can figure out who to, you know, you kind of can talk to people, oh, who do I talk to to sort this out? And you can kind of talk to your neighbors or talk to people within the complex um, to see how you solve it out. And that's how we kind of found, oh, who do we need to talk to and who can help us and what do we have to give them? <laughs> and that's kind of how things are solved here. And so, um, yeah, I hope you kind of learn something about how China works, how maybe renting stuff in China works here as well. And if anyone has a similar story, I'd love to hear it in the comments if you do have one. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like it and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.